This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Um, the website for the Mad Canadian is currently down, but you can still get some of that great, great seasoning that the Mad Canadian has to offer from his food truck. He'll be in Cary this Wednesday at the corner of North and Patterson. He'll be up in Upper Sandusky in the downtown section Thursday from 4 to 7. And in Finley by the Millstream Credit Union on Fostoria Avenue, Friday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Be sure to check out his social medias to find out where he is and his food truck are heading to next. Mankini Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of these episode, this is an episode. This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch roast order veteran owned coffee company. Marine, if you're curious. Um, World class hand roasted micro batch coffee is fresh roasted to order. It's not sitting around on a shelf. It's not sitting around in the back of some semi truck going across country and across oceans and all. No. It's 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 roasted in Ohio. It's shipped to wherever you are and it's not put to heat. It is not roasted. It is not sitting around getting stale. It is none of that happens. It is simply roasted and shipped direct to you. If you live in the general uh, Toledo area or maybe you just feel like going on a road trip, you can just go pick it up yourself and save even more time. Uh, they have a bunch of amazing coffees. You can find all of them at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Kyle. I know we're like seven episodes, six episodes, six episodes deep into this new season, but we're about to hit him up with that new format. We're hitting him up with the new format today. Yes, sir. We're going to be doing some short episodes now. Some shorter, shorter. Um, shorter. shorter. Um, yeah, we'll 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 talk about that. Um, talk about that more with the um, when we get the audio folks back in so that they know mm -hmm. it's up and we know it's up and everyone knows what's up. So let's let them know what's up. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you doing tonight, Jared? Um, I, I have no complaints. I'm in the chicken cooker. It's season time. It's 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 football time. Um, it's ready. To, we're ready to go, man. It's we're so close. We're so close. You know, it's close when we're ready to do one of our favorite s sections on this show here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so real quick, some housekeeping before we get going. One, you still have time to join our sloop picks. All you have to do is join our discord server. And there you will find information on how to join our online sloop picks. Uh, you still have time. Uh, if Ohio State hasn't kicked off yet, you still have time to join. Or, you know. Don't apparently because Nomad said he's going to win anyway, but. Um, Come get some. Come get it. That's all. That's all I got to say. Come get some. Mm -hmm. um, just a couple of other notes before we get to the meat of our episode here. Uh, just what's your quick take on uh, Quinn Ewers, his million dollar deal? Yeah, um, I, I want to do one more quick house, housekeeping item before we do that, Kyle. This is our new all format. Right. We're, we're starting a new format today. Um, this is going to be a shorter episode. Um, we're going to start breaking up because we keep doing like these hour, hour 20 episodes. So what we want to start doing to be a little, maybe a little bit more YouTube friendly um, is start breaking them up into smaller episodes. So we're going to break these up into some smaller episodes. Um, and instead of doing like two episodes a week during the season, we're going to do like four episodes a week during the season. Um, and you'll figure out the new flow of it once we get going. I'm not going to spend too much time, but like just subscribe to our YouTube channel, sub subscribe to the Buckeye Scoop YouTube channel, subscribe to the podcast and you'll get the new episodes when they come out. So you don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. 
So Quinn Ewers, $1.4 million deal. Uh, he's well, he's got the kombucha company. Uh, he got a giant F-250 um, from Reichert. Um, our boy Kirk Barton over at BuckeyeScoop.com uh, had a hand in that one. Uh, why don't you tell us about the latest deal? Uh, this one is by, uh, it's a multi-year, three-year deal with GT Sports Marketing. Uh, it's going to be for autograph signings during throughout his collegiate career, which is kind of funny where they say it's a three-year deal. So kind of hinting there. Um, three years, $1.4 million for the length of the contract. Yeah, it's pretty much just going to be the company for all of his autographs. There you go. All right, Kyle, um, I think that's it. Let's get right into it. And Kyle, I, I, you, you like to do it so much. I think I'm going to let you do it. It's the first one of the season. Tell, it, tell us what time is so, it is. This is so odd because we usually have a little. Yeah, things change um, and that stinks, but the, the North, new format will be worth it. All right. All right. Still kind of weird. All right. All right, everyone. It is time to know your enemy. All right. Know your enemy. The Minnesota, Kyle, Minnesota Golden Gophers. Yeah, soon. This soon. We're getting right into it. This is the new shorter uh, episode format. Nomad, were you not paying attention? <laughs> All right, the Minnesota Gophers, three and four last year due to the shortened season. Uh, was very an interesting team, had high hopes for them last year, but just didn't pan out the way that we thought they were going to. Like they, they start off the season one and three and then got a few other wins uh, later on in the year. We thought they were going to be a lot better last year. Is that going to be the case this year? Are, are they better than last year or are they still the same 500 team that we've seen them to be? Um, I'm willing to give Minnesota a, a 2020 mulligan. I'm going to, you know, we're going to talk about it on the national preview episode, which will come out a day or two after this episode uh, when we pick the Penn State game. I'm giving Penn State a 2020 mulligan as well. Um, I'm, I'm handing out mulligans is what I'm doing. Um <laughs> Do people not know what not know what mulligans are? It's it's just a it's a try over. It's a try again. Hey, that one didn't count. That one didn't count, everybody. Um I, I see you're over under. We'll get there. Um Yeah, didn't count. So whatever. They had a great year in 2019. 2020 was 2020. We a lot of us had bad 2020s. I'm I'm like I said, I'm, I'm willing to write it off. Um you know, they, they've had a marked are market remarkable uptick in uh, recruiting over the past few years. Um, you know, the last two recruiting classes, they were in the top 40, um, which I think is a, is a great accomplishment for Minnesota. Um, all, the the big key here for Minnesota, the big key here for Minnesota is two things. Kyle, which one do you want to talk about? I think because I think we're on the same page here. <laughs> well, I'm going to steal some of your thunder here because don't I think you dare you look here. I think the biggest thing you look here is five starting seniors on that offensive line. You have a Richard Senior, Richard Senior, Richard Senior in the center, Richard Senior, and then just a senior over at right tackle. You talk about experience. And then who Jared is going to cover here next as well. You got a, one of the best running backs in the conference behind that, that very highly experienced offensive line. Ooh, I think the Buckeyes are going to have their work cut out for them um, on our defensive line. What do you think? Uh, I mean, I like our defensive line a lot. I like our defensive line a whole, whole lot. Uh, th but this is this is going to be a great challenge for them right off the top of the show, top, top of the show, top of the season. Uh, great test for them. Um, we want to see a lot of questions answered for Ohio State because of like, of course we do. Right. Uh, first episode of or, God, I did it again. The first game of the season. 
Um, a lot of questions need answered. I just don't feel like the offensive line is one of those questions. Now they reshuffled the offensive line. It does look like we are getting that new look offensive line with Petit Ferrer at left tackle, Thayer Munford bumping into left guard, Dwan Jones at right tackle, Paris Johnson at right guard. Um, so we are getting that that reshuffled tackles, that new left guard, Thayer Munford jumping into left guard. It does look like we're getting that lineup. Mm -hmm. So that's a change, but like I have such faith in all five of those individuals that uh, I'm not really worried about the offensive line. And then you jump over to the defensive line, which is what I think I was supposed to be talking about here. Um, great. Uh, I love Ohio State's defensive line, um, both in the guys who are starting Zachary Harrison, uh, Smith, um, Haskell Garrett, uh, Vincent. I, the, all, all of these guys are great. And then the depth behind them is insane. The depth behind them is is next level amazing. So, you know, and we don't even have to talk about when we talk about that depth that's coming in. We don't even have to talk about guys like Jack Sawyer and JT to him allow. We don't even have to talk about them, even if those guys weren't on the team, even if those guys weren't eligible, they'd still have amazing depth along the defensive line. Just got to rotate those guys in, stay fresh. I think Ohio State's defensive line is going to hold up just fine. I mm -hmm. do think what we have to worry about, however, are the linebackers, because we've just not seen much production out of Ohio State's linebackers the few last few years. Yeah, and especially this type of game, I I fully expect this to be a an old fashioned Big Ten, um, just stuff it down your face type of type of game from from um, Minnesota, and yeah. <laughs> Mohammed uh, Ibrahim, Jared, rushed for over 100 yards in each game last year. Uh, he, which is a, it's just a great, it's just a great stat. You, but but at the same time, he Minnesota just gave him the ball so many times. He averaged almost yeah. 30 attempts per game. Yet he, he had 200 attempts in seven games for over a thousand yards in that game, averaging five and a half yards a pop. It's, it's definitely a person you have to really watch out for. And expecting not at all a change this, this game. Um, the, the only way you don't see, and I think I might jump into uh, Nomad asking a question here in our live chat. He says, ask Sloopcast. Over under Ibrahim rushes for 100 yards against Ohio State. Um, then he clarifies 100 yards on 35 attempts. Listen, 35 attempts <laughs> is that, that that's in the ballpark. OK, that's a possibility. I think the way you he, ran, he that, ran it, he ran it 41 times against Maryland last year. He ran it 33 times against Iowa, 30 times against Illinois last year. Not out of the realm. Sorry, uh, Suncard roasted you hard in the in the live chat. Um, <laughs> the <laughs> yeah, uh, to totally within totally within the realm of possibilities. One thing that will help limit Ibrahim's carries, however, is Ohio State's offense. Because we can talk about how good Minnesota's offense potentially could be. And I think that they will be good. As Kyle pointed out, an incredibly seniored offensive line. A running back who they're not afraid to give the rock to a ton. A very talented running back, very talented offensive line, a good enough quarterback to win the Big Ten West. Wide receivers, however, sketchy. Um, and yep. the wide receivers were sketchy to begin with. Um, and it looks like Chris Autumn Bell may or may not play. Not sure. Yeah. They do have a transfer from Texas A&M, uh, Dylan Wright, that you have to keep an eye out for as well. Uh, he, he, he was recruiting wise. Dylan Wright was a was a top hundred. He was 70th uh, top recruit 
in the 2018 class there. 12th best receiver. So definitely a guy you have to watch out for uh, this year. Uh, another guy to watch out on the wide receivers would be uh, Daniel Jackson. I think he was like third in receptions on the team last year, third or fourth. I can't remember offhand, but yeah, I think those are two other names. If Chris Autumn Bell can't go, Dylan Wright and um, and uh, Daniel Jackson are two names you need to keep out an eye out for. Now, if we switch focus to the other side, however, I think Ohio State's offense rolls. I the talent is overwhelming, and like it's C.J. Stroud's first game, and I'm I'm not I'm not at all worried about it. Um, the offensive line is going to be great. The wide receivers, this might go down as the best top to bottom wide receiving crew of all time. More running backs than you know what to do with. There's no weaknesses on the offense. And oh, by the way, Jeremy Rucker. By the way, by the way, Jeremy Rucker. I, there's too much talent on the offense. Dare I say there is too much talent on the offense. I'm not worried about Ohio State killing it on the offensive side of the ball, not just this game, but in all the games, but especially this game. Um, Minnesota has a lot of great things going for them on the offensive side of the ball. Defensive side of the ball, um, they have Boye Mafe, who I think is a an excellent player. Um, I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to minimize him too much. He's a great pass rusher. Outside of that, I, I don't know if there's anyone on this team defensively from Minnesota who gives me real pause. Um, another another name to keep out for on the defensive side would be Tyler Nubbin, uh, one of the top returning tacklers for the team, uh, especially when you have a young quarterback. Uh, I think I think you have to watch out for number twenty seven wherever he's at on the field there. Nomad asks, does Mayan Williams start? I believe so. I think that that's my prediction for the first carry. Yep. All right. Before we continue, Jared, I think we need to hear from our sponsors. Absolutely. Oh, was I going first? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mad Canadian barbecue company. No, I'm just I'm just. I tried to throw a Kyle threw me a curve. I tried to throw him a curve back. The Aaron Bean Coffee Company. Oh, uh, I already told you why you should buy from them. Um, or did I? Uh, Fair Trade Certified USDA Organic. All of their beans. All of their beans. Fair Trade Certified USDA Organic. Why? Because integrity is the core value of what they do. Integrity is what you do even when no one is looking and they do everything right. That's why they fresh roast order the beans. That's why they micro roast the beans. That's why all of their beans are fair trade and USDA organic. That's why you can save money by doing a subscribe and save service. They don't take shortcuts. They do everything the best way, even if it's not the easiest way. And that's why you can trust that your coffee is not only, excuse me, your money, your money is not only buying the best possible coffee that you can buy, but that you're also supporting the right people. You're not supporting some giant Folgers side organization that's doing <laughs> things the wrong way. You look into some of the moral implications of giant coffee, yada, yada, yada. But that's why you buy from a small local, not not for many reasons, you know, keeping your money in Ohio, supporting a veteran owned company, supporting a mom and pop company, all of those things. But you're also supporting a company with you doing the right thing by supporting the right company who is also doing the right things, who is then supporting farms who are doing things the right way. You're making the world better. And oh, by the way, it also produces a better coffee cup. It also produces a better morning for you in your coffee cup. It all comes full circle, guys. So with all of that being said, <laughs> I'm going to let Kyle do his ad read now, but you can go to ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee ro roaster. This episode is also brought to you by our good friend over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Their site may be down, but the food truck is still hot. <laughs> uh, check out the Mad Canadian 
um, in the Ohio area uh, to find out where he and his food truck are going to, mainly in the Northwest area, but he'll occasionally go outside of his comfort zone. So um, just keep egging him on. Eventually, you may get him to go to other areas in Ohio, though. Um, you can catch him in Cary on Wednesday if you're listening to this the day of the release. Hit him up um, for the evening to go get some good dinner with some of the barbecue he's cooking up. If you're in Upper Sandusky, he'll be there Thursday uh, afternoon. And then on Friday at lunchtime, he'll be at the No Stream Credit Union on Fostoria Avenue in Finley, Ohio. Any other news or information, just check out the Mad Canadian social media sites on Twitter or on Facebook. Find out where he and his food truck are going to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. All right, Kyle, let's get back into the show. But first, I, I need to point out to you that the Sloop Cats down in the live chat are, are I know. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're turning against us. <laughs> They're, uh, they're conspiring and I don't trust them. Just keep an eye on them. <laughs> All right, Kyle. Uh, so we let you know about Minnesota. We let you know about a bunch of stuff in regards to this game. Um, do you have any maybe quick thoughts on what you'd like to see now that we've known, now we got to know our enemy, maybe some quick thoughts. What do you want to see from Ohio State this game? Um, not and obviously like beyond like I want them to do well, but like what are you looking for maybe more specifically in this game from Ohio State? To be honest, I know a lot of people are like, oh, the the shiny new quarterback and all of the great weapons they have. I want to see how well they can run the ball. They struggled that last year. I want to see them being able to just dominate the line of scrimmage, being able to rush it five yards a carry plus. And that's going to open the things up for CJ Stroud Great and that uh, Howling to wide receiver group. That's what I want to see. I want to see over five yards per carry on this um, rushing attack. I really want to see. I don't in this game. I don't think we're going to see a, a good test of the defensive backs per se, uh, just because I don't think Minnesota has the wide receiver talent really to. But what I would like to see is something out of the linebackers. Um, we don't even really know who the linebacker starters are. Um, I think we can make some assumptions, but I, I really want to see what the linebackers look like right now. I want to see how they're implementing the bullet this year as a thing I absolutely want to see. Um, and I think Nomad had a good answer here. Uh, he wants a minimum seven passes over 20 yards and not just yards after the catch. I, I agree with you, Gangland, and uh, he, he, he name checks Cody Simon, and oh boy, are you reading the show notes. Okay, Kyle, <laughs> let's, let's get into it. Um, Ohio State player to watch. Who do you have as your Ohio State player to watch? And it's going to be the starting running back that I predict, Mayan Williams. As I mentioned before, I think Ohio State needs to dominate that line of scrimmage, assert their dominance, so to speak. And that's going to be done mainly on the feet of Mayan Williams. The feet, the ankles, the knees, even the shoulders, really. Uh, Gangland, this one's for you. Yes, it was already in the show notes. Ohio State player to watch, Cody Simon. Want to see what the linebackers are offering. I feel like I like everyone on the offense. I feel like I like everyone on the defensive line. I want to see what Ohio State's linebackers look like. I'm going out on a limb. I'm saying Cody Simon is starting. We don't know that, but that's what I'm putting out there. Um, that's my prediction so I, I, for the starting middle linebacker. And I want to see what he looks like. There's been a lot of hype this offseason, and I want to see him live up to it. So we're, we're getting a lot of just interaction here in our in our chat yeah so i'm going to hear yeah. from those who are listening who, who do you have as your player to watch for ohio state and gangland and already we, answered that, Juan jones which i think is a great answer mm -hmm, yeah Juan jones another good one maybe a fan favorite or a um discord favorite maybe maybe i should have said our favorite tight end here ruckert i uh, see i think the, the 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 i think the chat already switched oh okay we have garrett wilson demario mccall I think they switched to year of the fullback. If you scroll up through that chat a bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
All right, Kyle, um, any player of the game, who do you have? I got the, I got the transfer. I know everybody, the, the correct answer is Ibrahim. The correct answer is Ibrahim. But which, which is I'm my answer. With, since yeah, I took the I'm easy go, answer. I'm going to go with that, uh, Dylan Wright. Uh, here's someone transferred in. Don't know too much from Minnesota's scheme here, how well he'll, he'll be in here. I, I think he'll be, he'll be a surprise for Ohio State at really testing out the, um, the secondary group. Yeah, uh, and like I said, I went with Ibrahim. Ohio State needs to score points. Uh, scoring a lot of points will help take Ibrahim out of the game. It'll force Minnesota to throw the ball. So your best defense against uh, against Ibrahim will be a good offense. Um, and you do that just by forcing Minnesota to throw the ball. And if you force Minnesota to throw the ball, then you can start getting your young defensive ends in there because now you're getting into Rushman packages. You can have your guys just pin their ears back and go get out to a quick lead, get Ibrahim out of the game, put your defensive line into a bull rush position to be able to just tee off on the quarterback. That's how you win mm -hmm. this game, because while Minnesota's offensive line is very good as a running offensive line. How good are they against an elite pass rush? That's that's what I'd like to see happen in this game. All right. He uh, match up. He match up. All right. We'll do it in stereo. It's fine. <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and start. I'll, I think it's the linebackers. He twangs every Ibrahim. once in a while, Nomad. <laughs> it's linebacker versus uh, Ibrahim. I, it's linebackers are is just an untested group right now. We know what Ibrahim can do. I think this is the matchup you, you need to watch here. I think the offensive line and the defensive line will really go at it. And Ibrahim is going to find those holes and it's going to be the linebackers job there to fill those holes and to make those crucial tackles and not let them get outside. Kyle, we, we, we made, we basically answered this the same, but we took different routes to do it. Um, because I went to Ohio state's defensive line versus Minnesota's offensive line. That's the key. That's it's strength on strength. It's Ohio State's best defensive unit versus Minnesota's best unit, period. And that's that's the key to the game. That's the difference between Ohio State blowing out Minnesota and Ohio State beating Minnesota. Yep. All right. The spread here, Jared, is 13 and a half points. Yeah, 13 uh, and a half. We have. Yeah, 13 and a half. And uh, this week's uh, guest picker is Tanner Gale, who's been a um, who's been on here previously. Absolutely. Uh, he so has been. We, we got it. We got his picks in here. So um, this is still weird, Jared. I'm used to going through all of the other games and then yeah. talking about how state last year. But um, we, we got his email here. We got his picks here and we did our picks here. So the spread 13 and a half points. Do you, Jared, think that Ohio State can cover that? I do. I think Ohio State covers that. Again, I think it depends upon can they get out to a quick lead? Can they take Ibrahim out of the game? If they stop Ibrahim, either through stopping Ibrahim the traditional way or by scoring a bunch of points early and forcing Minnesota to pass, they will cover. If they don't do those things, they won't. Yep. Well, not many, te not many teams have. Well, really, no one was able to do that last year as he just ran all over in every game. But I agree. I think Ohio State will cover here. Just too much offensive firepower. And unless they give the ball 50 times to uh, Ibrahim there, and I still might. don't think that's still enough there. So, yeah, I have Ohio State to cover the 13 and a half. So that it goes without saying that all three of us are picking Ohio State to also win the game. Final score prediction. Mm -hmm. Uh, our right. guest yep. picker, Tanner Gale, is going 38 to 17. 38 Which to 17 in favor of your fighting Buckeyes. <laughs> well, we're getting the boo. We're getting the boo um, from gang lane here. We're call calling us homers here. But you know what? Call us homers. But I, I, <laughs> I have Ohio State 45 to 24. And I have it 49 to 21 in favor of Ohio State. So uh, right. Nomad, our scores are very similar. Very, very similar. I gave them a touchdown where you gave them a field goal and I gave Ohio State an extra point. 
All right, Jared. Um, what else do you want to cover next here? We are at the 30 minute mark, exactly 30 minutes now. Well, we still have some uh, Ask Sloopcast stuff to do. And uh, the return of uh, Stuart E4 US Vets. Uh, I dare you to pronounce those name games. All right, All right. Kyle, you wanna quickly, for, for new you wanna listeners, quickly? one of our uh, old, old, super old time listeners. I, what, I, I don't mean to say you're old, Stuart. I, I mean to say that you're a experienced Sloopcast fan. Just so when I say you're an old listener. Um, so if you new to the show, he sends us the most difficult names on the team to pronounce and dares me to try to pronounce them on the show. Okay. Mariano. Sorry. Sorry. Marin. <laughs> sorry, Marin. Mariano, uh, sorry, Marin. All right. Um, wide receiver Peter Udobo Udubok. Oh, I, I stop. Yep. Nope. Oh, by the way, right. uh, Nomad was asking for uh, the number and position. Uh, my uh, Mariano was number fifty-five in a linebacker. Yep, and mine's eighty-four wide receiver. Um, you already said Boye. Uh, we already said boy already here. Uh, uh, lace kicker. I, that that's dragon. I I don't know how else you'd pronounce that. Dragon Kasich. Uh, he have, spells uh, it D R A G A N. Uh, place kicker number ninety nine. I have defensive back number dragon and not dragon, but I'm I'm gonna say dragon. Matt Gagemos. Um, all right. I, I think we, I think we did enough there for, for today. I think we've, I think we've, um, scared enough people away. So let's, let's go ahead and finish the episode with the, some There's still some good cast. ones on here, Kyle. <laughs> I, I know, but we need to, we need to move on here. Matt Gagamos. I said that already. Oh, um, Ethan. It's, it's Ethan, but with an A. So Ethan. Um, Calicamanus, Calicamanus. I'm, I'm pronouncing that, that. I'm sure that should be pronounced with more of a, a, a Greek flavor to it. And I'm messing it up. All right. All right. You got a few ask Sloopcast questions here. Uh, Duncan asks, is the last place team in the big 10 had to play in a bowl game at doing? the end of the yeah, year right. against IMG Academy for their spot in the conference? Um, who wins? Um, I, I, so the, by the way, who's the last team? Cause if, if you'd asked me that last week, I was said it was Illinois, but apparently it's not. Um, so if the worst team is, is, uh, Illinois or maybe Nebraska, then uh, yeah, I mean, jokes aside, no, the, the best absolute 100% best team in high school couldn't touch the worst division one college football team. I don't, Kansas couldn't touch him in the same way that I don't care how good Bama is this year or any of their previous years. Bama would not touch get they'd get run off the field by the worst NFL team. Yep. All right. Uh, Stuart with a question here, which team do we hang more on this year? Uh, the team up North for ducking us or Indiana for claiming they deserve our big 10 championship spot. The, the answer is always Michigan. Yes, the answer is always that. And that last one here, Buckeye Esquire. How is the fact that it isn't Thursday already not a violation of the Eighth, eighth Amendment? Uh, I, I don't I don't think. I don't think we have dominion over time to take that, take it to the Supreme Court. Yep. All right. All right. That's it for today's episode, Jared. All right. Do you have anything? Uh, just uh, visit the Um We have a bunch of cool links there. Go check them out. Make sure you subscribe to like everywhere that we're offering subscription. And um, that way, whenever we, we put out a new episode, you'll you'll know about it. And like I said, uh, come join us on the discord discord dot the Get in on the sloop picks. Get in on our online sloop picks before it's too late. And um, if you're listening to this of the day of the Ohio State game, that that clock is real ticking. 
it's real, real thickened. So uh, come join us. And um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, yeah. What's what's the Cincinnati Bengals doing? Getting rid of a pair of Ohio State linemen. Do they not want to protect their quarterback? Uh, I, Yeah, I don't know. Um, I was surprised. I, I did see Pittsburgh kept Haskins. Um, Haskins, I still think the number two quarterback on that team, um, despite the fact that he did have a really bad uh, last preseason game. All right, that's it. That's it. For yes, no bad. The answer to that question is is yes. Although no one's forced us to do that yet, the answer is yes because, quite frankly, it's a lot of money. All right, Kyle, anything else in Kyle's corner? That's it. All right. Uh, yeah, I know, right? It's almost like Cameo, except we have to do it publicly. <laughs> All right. Um, tonight's ending music. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by. Kyle, I didn't I didn't. I didn't prepare anything. I know, right? Uh, chat, got to help us out here. Come on. Got to oh, help us out. Oh, the, 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 the chat's not helping me. The chat's not helping me. Come on. I see Z Spikes typing. I'm, I'm Z, you got a lot of power right now. If they're from Ohio, we're doing it. Nothing. <laughs> oh, God. Uh. Oh, God. All right. Gangland, that's especially un that is aggressively unhelpful. That is a great is that is that a thing? Or are you just or are you just saying stuff? Oh my goodness. All right, uh tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a band. Uh that they're too that's too big. That's too big. Uh I know he's from Cleveland, but that's too big. Uh, so tonight's band will be um, a, a band by the name of. I thought of a thing, then I forgot it. I swear to God, this is not a bit. I swear to God, I while they were goofing on me, then he said Machine Gun Kelly, but that's too big. I don't play anyone that big. And then I forgot what I was actually going to say that that's a thing that actually just now happened. What is happening to my brain? All right. Tonight, I'm playing a band uh, called Settle Your Scores. They're a pop punk band from the Cincinnati area. You can check them out on Bandcamp or in the links that I'm going to put in the show notes. So uh, they have a new music, I believe, just came out. So you can check that out for yourself. Like I said, either the Bandcamp page or the YouTube page. And with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to, by the way, no ad read at the end of this. Uh, we're, we're cutting out the ad read at the end of the show for the short podcast. Um, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Settle Your Scores. All right, YouTube, thanks for joining and stay tuned for that screen that comes up to subscribe to the two different things. Um, hit the notification bell since, like I said, we're going to be doing uh, a little bit of a weird... Um, release schedule different weird release schedule um and then we're about to stop this recording start a new recording and we're going to do our national preview i'm not even going to change my shirt because i'm not i'm not i'm i don't lie i'm not the type of person who would lie to you and act like i'm a person who just wears a different shirt that would be a lie so uh, stay tuned and for the people down in the live chat, stay tuned and for everyone else, we'll see you in a day or two. Peace.